November 7th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ezekiel chapters 29 and 30 from the Old Testament. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, on the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, turn toward Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Tell them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I am against you, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great monster lying in the midst of its waterways, who has said, My Nile is my own, I made it for myself. I will put hooks in your jaws and stick the fish of your waterways to your scales. I will haul you up from the midst of your waterways and all the fish of your waterways will stick to your scales. I will leave you in the wilderness, you and all the fish of your waterways. You will fall in the open field and will not be gathered up or collected. I have given you as food to the beasts of the earth and the birds of the skies. Then all those living in Egypt will know that I am the Lord, because they were a reed staff for the house of Israel. When they grasp you with their hand, you broke and tore their shoulders, and when they leaned on you, you splintered and caused their legs to be unsteady. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm about to bring a sword against you, and I will kill every person and every animal. The land of Egypt will become a desolate ruin. Then they will know that I am the Lord, because he said, The Nile is mine, and I made it. I am against you and your waterways. I will turn the land of Egypt into an utter desolate ruin, from Migdal to Syene, as far as the border from Ethiopia. No human foot will pass through it, and no animal's foot will pass through it. It will be uninhabited for forty years. I will turn the land of Egypt into a desolation in the midst of desolate lands. For forty years her cities will lie desolate in the midst of ruined cities. I will scatter Egypt among the nations and disperse them among the foreign countries. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. At the end of 40 years, I will gather Egypt from the peoples where they were scattered. I will restore the fortunes of Egypt and will bring them back to the land of Pathros, to the land of their origin. There they will be an insignificant kingdom. It will be the most insignificant of the kingdoms. It will never again exalt itself over the nations. I will make them so small that they will not rule over the nations. It will never again be Israel's source of confidence, but a reminder of how they sin by turning to Egypt for help. Then they will know that I am the Sovereign Lord. In the 27th year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon made his army labor hard against Tyre. Every head was rubbed bald and every shoulder rubbed bare. Yet he and his army received no wages from Tyre for the work he carried out against it. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm about to give the land of Egypt to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. He will carry off her wealth, capture her loot, and seize her plunder. It will be his army's wages. I have given him the land of Egypt as his compensation for attacking Tyre, because they did it for me declares the Sovereign Lord. On that day I will make Israel powerful, and I will give you the right to be heard among them. Then they will know that I am the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Wail, alas, the day is here. For the day is near, the day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of storm clouds. It will be a time of judgment for the nations. A sword will come against Egypt, and panic will overtake Ethiopia. When the slain fall in Egypt and they carry away her wealth and dismantle her foundations. Ethiopia, Put, Lud, all the foreigners, Libya and the people of the covenant land will die by the sword along with them. This is what the Lord says. Egypt's supporters will fall. Her confident pride will crumble. From Migdal to Syene, they will die by the sword within her, declares the Sovereign Lord. They will be desolate among desolate lands, and their cities will be among ruined cities. 
they will know that I am the Lord when I ignite a fire in Egypt and all her allies are defeated. On that day, messengers will go out from me in ships to frighten overly confident Ethiopia. Panic will overtake them on the days of Egypt's doom, for beware, it is coming. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will put an end to the hordes of Egypt by the hand of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. He and his people with him, the most terrifying of the nations, will be brought there to destroy the land. They will draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with corpses. I will dry up the waterways and hand the land over to evil men. I will make the land and everything in it desolate by the hand of foreigners. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will destroy the idols and put an end to the gods of Memphis. There will no longer be a prince from the land of Egypt, so I will make the land of Egypt fearful. I will desolate Pathros. I will ignite a fire in Zoan, and I will execute judgments on Thebes. I will pour out my anger upon Pelusium, the stronghold of Egypt. I will cut off the hordes of Thebes. I will ignite a fire in Egypt. Syene will writhe in agony, Thebes will be broken down, and Memphis will face enemies every day. The young men of On and of Pi-Beseth will die by the sword, and the cities will go into captivity. In Tapanes the day will be dark, when I break the yoke of Egypt there. Her confident pride will cease within her. A cloud will cover her, and her daughters will go into captivity. I will execute judgments on Egypt. Then they will know that I am the Lord. In the eleventh year, in the first month, on the seventh day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Look, it has not been bandaged for healing or set with a dressing, so that it might become strong enough to grasp a sword. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and I will break his arms, the strong arm and the broken one, and I will make the sword drop from his hand. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them among foreign countries. I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, and I will place my sword in his hand. But I will break the arms of Pharaoh, and he will groan like the fatally wounded before the king of Babylon." I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, but the arms of Pharaoh will fall limp. Then they will know that I am the Lord when I place my sword in the hand of the king of Babylon, and he extends it against the land of Egypt. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them among the foreign countries. Then they will know that I am the Lord. God, some of these prophecies that you're giving to Ezekiel are actually happening in real time. A lot of a lot of times we misunderstand the word prophecy and we think it's something in the future. And that's not always the case. Uh, we have to remember that the Old Testament was way before the advent of the Internet and instantaneous information. And some of the prophecies that Ezekiel's talking about were happening at that exact time, just hundreds and hundreds of miles away, and they were coming true. Uh, And can you imagine as the writer came in, possibly weeks later, into that particular city where the people had heard that prophecy, to tell them that the prophecy had happened just as Ezekiel was saying it it was, and exactly how Ezekiel said it was going to happen. Can you imagine (laughs) The looks on their faces, well, I know you don't have to imagine because you were there, but um, to me that's kind of funny because Ezekiel must have gone, yeah, I told you this, why aren't you believing me because this is all the word of God. And sometimes I feel like Ezekiel in the sense that, not always, but a lot of times I try and be obedient to you and part of that obedience and one in which I will gladly do is to tell other people about you. And sometimes I get to see the fruits of that labor. Um, You allow me to see that person start walking a relationship with you, start going to church, ask more questions, whatever that looks like. And then other times, um, 
you choose to not show me anything, that I was just a piece of that puzzle. Um, and so sometimes I feel like Ezekiel, that I'm saying things and doing things, uh, but in the long run, a lot of times I won't, know, I won't see that writer coming into town and saying, hey, did you know that Ezekiel was right when he was saying this? We actually were being defeated by so-and-so. Um, I know that a lot of times, God, that I will never hear, hey, Janelle, thank you for talking to me about X, Y, and Z. You know, ultimately, I became a follower of Christ, and here's the things I've done. I actually don't need to know about that. I just need to be obedient to your word. I don't need to know that any of it did anything. I only have to be obedient to you because whatever you've asked me to do is intentional and it's for the good of your kingdom. It is wonderful to see people come to faith, uh, to walk with you. It is a wonderful, glorious feeling to know that somebody else has their salvation intact. But I also know that it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> it only has to do with you. So being frustrated at any given time and not seeing any of my hard work pay off has to be set aside. Uh, and I have to be reminded, and please continue to remind me, that it's about you. It's being obedient to you and having faith to trust in you that whatever you've asked me to do is what you needed me to do, is going to be used by you in whatever way you see fit, and it's going to be the best for the plan that you have for us. God, I don't always trust in that plan. I arrogantly think sometimes that I know better and I want things to go my way. And I know that that's wrong. And, and please continue to work on me and teach me that whether you allow me to see the fruits of my labor or not, that it's still important that as long as I'm being obedient to you and obeying what you've asked me to do, that is the only thing that I should truly care about at that point. God, humble my heart. <laughs> please make me realize that I know nothing, that in full submission to you, that you know everything. And I just lay my life down at your feet and allow me to pick up your will for my life and to walk down that path so that my life reflects your glory, your control, your desire for what is best for all of us. In your son's name I pray. Amen.